It is Wednesday, March 23rd, 2022. This is another edition of Baseball Today. That is my man, T. Ploof. I am Chris Rose. And boy, what a big day it has been in the John Boy Media offices. I can only imagine what's going on up there in New York after signing a, an agreement with the Yes Network. Pretty cool stuff, huh? It is. I mean, I think it's a real good thing for our company. But really, when you just break it down, think about like Jimmy and Jake, obviously big Yankee fans have probably watched a ton of content on the Yes Network. Now they are partnering up with David Cohn, like having their own stuff on the app. Like what a like what a cool thing to see, to see happen to two guys who just put the work in, create good content, hired amazing people like you and I. And then all of a sudden, bam, just like that. Uh, So congrats to the boys. Yeah, they hired a lot more people than just the two of us. And oh, really? No. Who, yeah, they work it too behind the scenes. I will say this Fine. to somebody who's been in this business for a long time and has kind of seen a total change come about. If you have dreams, it's the one thing I tell college kids because I speak to a lot of classes. I was like, you got to find something that when you wake up every day that makes your heart flutter because you're going to dedicate a lot of time. You're going to miss some stuff in your family's lives, all that sort of stuff. Find something you're passionate about. Jimmy and Jake were just regular nine to five Joes and they found this, they discovered it. They started the business out of one of their spare bedrooms. There were three employees and now we've got what 35 to 40 employees, a midtown Manhattan office on the 11th floor of a building. And they just joined forces with the yes network. So dare to dream, go follow it and go crush it. Like these guys have done. It has been an honor to, to be here the 13 months that I have so far and we'll continue to rocket ship on our way. Okay. You're way better at compliments than I am. <laughs> Just saying, man. I love no, it. It's all true what it. you said. It's all true what you said. Yeah. So let's uh, do our part and focus on baseball today. Uh, Carlos Correa and the Twins made it official. Uh, he is now donning number four, which is an interesting look for him instead of number one. They're in Twinsville. Now that he has signed on the dotted line for the next three years and 103 mil, which could opt out after each of the first two years, how much are they making the White Sox sweat in the AL Central? I think they're making the White Sox sweat like you'd sweat if you're on the treadmill at like the lowest degree and you walk for quite a bit, just like a little lather. So like this, like when I'm waddling on the treadmill, there's no sprinting going on. You're not drenched in sweat. It's just like a little, uh, you know, maybe I don't even have to shower kind of sweat like that. I will say this. When you look at the two lineups, I can, I like the Twins lineup, and the Chicago White Sox lineup is amazing. Hold on, I don't do you like it twins... better than the White Sox? No, I don't. I don't. I don't. But it's close. <laughs> it is comparable. It's comparable. It's comparable if everything goes right for the Twins. Right. And then, But the thing is, once you start getting to kind of the pitching staff, since there's no offense to some of the guys on the Twins team, the, the White Sox starters and their bullpen they lap kind the of field. on another level. They lap the field. Yeah, so, and that's not taking a shot at the Twins, by the way. I really think the White Sox are one of the most complete teams in baseball. They didn't put yes. them together last October against the, the Astros, but they really are one of the – and the, here's the thing about the White Sox. What, what you just said and what I agree with with the Twins, when everything goes right, meaning when Buxton's healthy, if Correa plays 155 games, if Kirilov can continue to develop, right, all that sort of stuff, we, it's if, if, if. Last year – Let's remember, Eloy Jimenez missed significant time. Luis Robert missed significant time. And the White Sox still dusted the field in the division. So not everything went right, and they still crushed everybody. If you're a Twins fan, be excited about this lineup. I mean, just going down, some of the names, some of the power, some of of the athleticism in this lineup is incredible. It's going to be an amazing product to watch on the field. Pitching needs to get a little bit better for the Twins. Yep, a lot better. And listen, the White Sox, I think the White Sox bullpen – is right up there with the Braves in terms of the best in baseball, adding Joe Kelly, adding Kendall Graveman to a bunch of those fire breathing dragons already throwing 95 plus. That's going to be a tough team to beat, but yes, it'll be, at least they made it interesting in my opinion. Interesting. Okay. Uh, I am wearing a Jacob deGrom hat. That's because he was on the mound for the first time yesterday since July 7th in the competitive atmosphere, five K's two innings. How much should New York baby its ace this year? I think you just got to go to Jacob and and talk to him and let him decide. He knows his body. I don't think there needs to be babying. Like he almost like he was back at the end of the year and then they ended up shutting him down because they didn't really want to push it. Because they sucked. Yeah, they weren't in it. So he had a whole offseason to get ready. He says he's feeling really good. 
Uh, I mean, you watched his his two innings yesterday. My goodness, dude. It's it's something special when you see him pitch. The one thing I will say that I want out of Jacob DeGrom this year, can I tell you? Mm-hmm. I saw his – he had some, like, neck hair. Like, the, the it wasn't looking good, the hair. So, maybe he just needs to grow it back out. Like, I miss long-haired Jacob DeGrom. Can you do that for me and then continue to be your dominant self? I don't think there needs to be any training wheels. Talk to Jacob, see how he feels, and then let the man go out and eat this year. I have mixed emotions about this one, right? I mean, he was on a historic pace the first historic. two months. And we were all like, holy shit, we are seeing something special. And then it just went awry. And I can't, I can't deal with another season where I see three months of Jacob DeGrom. It's not good enough for me. I'm not a Mets fan, but I am a huge baseball fan where I will stop what I'm doing when he's pitching. You know, like I didn't he's even know the, the only Mets pitchers. had a night game last night. And I found out that he was pitching. I was like, stop, full stop. And watched it. Yes. No, that's full stop. I was given the oh. boom. Well, but all you had to do is look at the dugout yesterday. The Mets dugout during a fucking spring training game. They are up on the rails like it's October. I think there's maybe 10 players in the league right now where you stop what you're doing and watch either the and at bat or you have him pitch an inning. I think it's Jacob DeGrom. I think it's Tatis, Acuna, Soto, Shohei. Trout, Shohei. I mean, there's a few other guys I'm probably missing, but. He's one of those guys, but the, here's the thing. I don't think babying is guaranteeing him to be healthy throughout the year. I, I think you need I to know. keep him on a consistent routine. Just make sure he's getting every single thing he needs. And then again, just listen to what he's saying. Cause this guy is a vet. He's been through some injuries. Now he understands his body. Listen to what he has to say and let the guy go out and do his thing. It's interesting because last year was really the first time where he was missing starts. Like if you yeah. go back 17, 18, 19, 200 innings, and then in the shortened season, he even made, a, I think, a dozen starts. It's full complement of starts. So he's yeah. always been a guy to take the baseball for the most part in his career. So I This um, wasn't a significant injury either. Like it kept him out of the season, but it wasn't he didn't have to go get surgery or anything like that. So like I think he's fine. Well, it wasn't significant from the standpoint of surgery, but we were always worried about it. We were like, oh my God, when are we going to hear those two dreadful words? Mm-mm. Don't We're not even going to speak dare. him into existence. You better not. Nope. Let's move on. Okay. Lots of big names avoided arbitration by, you know, agreeing to a, an amount with their team. Which one should a team extend before spring training is done, in your opinion? Well, the one like, this is a hard question because the one I want isn't going to happen. And there's pretty much only one reason why it's not going to happen. I want Julio Urias for the Dodgers to get extended. He's got two more years before he's free agent eligible. I think he's a guy that you build around. If you're the Dodgers, I think they know that I mean, 20 wins last year, forget about, you know, not calling a win, a good stat. I mean, that's an impressive number to get to Uh, the one problem. I bet you know what it is. He's a Boris guy. Mm. They don't really, they don't really do uh, arbitration extensions unless we're getting the bag bag. So the Dodgers don't have to do that, and because he's a Boris client, it probably won't happen. But I'm looking at that list you sent, and, and, and that's the guy that I want right there. Well, it's interesting. I could have made an argument for his teammate, Walker Bueller, to Him do that. Too. He's kind of – even though he didn't agree to a, a dollar figure yesterday, he's on the back end of, I think, a two-year $8 million contract that he signed last year. But then it would wipe out the next few years of arbitration if he were to get signed up. And let's remember, the Dodgers are clearing a lot of space off the books. They're going to lose – you know, Kershaw's contract, Heaney's contract. They're going to need guys to wrap up. Um, I also thought about another guy on their team in Trey Turner, who's in his last year before he hits free agency. Like you can't have yeah, Seager and Turner walk out the door one right after the other, right? It's going to be real tough to get him to sign an extension right now. Last yeah. year can have a bunch of suitors. Uh, I mean, look, he probably wants to stay in LA. So if they did make him a substantial offer, uh, maybe he thinks about it, but also it's very enticing to be able to test that free agent market to go get a bunch of dinners uh, laid out for you by all the teams, you know? Yeah. So I think he probably is, wants is that, to do that. You know, Carlos Correa probably is going to end up back on the market too. Just saying. So, this is Trey I mean, Turner, bro. I, I get it. And he has been phenomenal. Like, I, in my opinion, an undervalued player. Undervalued because of everything he does. Plus his positional versatility is all over the place. So if he ages up, 
Go move him somewhere else. What? How did Walker Bueller sign a two year eight? I know it's just, I know it's just arbitration. I understand right. that, but what? I don't know. But can I give you my final answer on this? Please. I haven't even given you my final answer. I'm sorry. Corbin Burns. Yeah, I thought about him too. He signed for one for for six and a half, I think is what it was. Oh my. So he's got another three years of control. He's only 27. The Brewers only have 32 and change guaranteed on the books come next year. So you could probably say, hey, Corbin, you're at a perfect age. Sign a six or seven year deal and get something done. I know they've already got the $200 million deal with Yelich, and that's where this is the year the money really starts to kick in on mm-hmm. Yelich. But they really don't have anybody else that they're paying. We saw him in spring training. I saw him face Yelich and, and Adamus and, and Urias there. The guy's lights out. Yep. I, I agree with you. I, I think the Brewers, they could offer him something. I don't think he'd probably like what the Brewers would offer just because they do have those years of control. They have all the leverage here. Um, so it's not going to be like something crazy, but I agree. Like these guys are the guys, like when you have starting pitchers like this as an organization, you have to keep them. You have to keep them because as we see all throughout the league, if you don't have starting pitching, you know, nothing. So I agree with you. Core merge is a good one. Walker, Urias, sign them up guys. Keep them on the team. Yeah. But with Burns though, like I said, if you dangle a certain dollar figure in front of it, if he made six and a half this year and he continues on the arc, he's making over 10 next year and then 17 or 18 in that last year of arbitration you know so i'm just saying that you can buy out some years of arbitration if you're a smart franchise and try and wiggle your way through this but that's what he knows that he knows he's going to get 10 and then 17 if he just plays and then if the brewers were to offer an extension they wouldn't go to those numbers so it's like it's a bet on yourself type of thing you got to stay healthy um but yeah, look, you you can you could you could put a contract in front of them, and it is as a player. You look at the, that number, that guaranteed number, and you say, "I could set my family up for life." It's it's a very enticing option. And just some guys like to bet on themselves, and some guys will say, "You know what? Let me go do it. Let me be happy and not to worry about any of this anymore." So, hey, Brewers, go do it. Yep. All right. Um, rules. There's the new Shohei Otani rule. We just missed out on it yesterday by about a half hour. <laughs> we were hour. talking about that. We couldn't figure it out. We're like, what's going to happen? <laughs> yeah. So that's good. It's basically a rule one of one, if you will. They're going to allow Shohei after he pitches to remain in as the DH, which is great for baseball. I don't care about Hold the on. fairness. Of, huh? So then we're going to have a – so then the pitcher, another pitcher will come in and Shohei will DH for that guy. And, okay. And take over – right. He will be, He will be the DH. Then for the you can't put, you're not going to play the field at all. Just go no. and sit in the dugout and hit. It's, no, it's, it's so funny because think about him. Like I'm thinking now, like you pitch, you're supposed to go do some arm care when you get done out of the game. Like, is he going to be doing a little bit of arm care between innings and then yeah. going back out and hitting? Like it's this all is new territory. Yeah. For him. Fascinating. Yeah. And I'm happy. You know what? That's baseball being proactive to be honest with hey. you, which is something I, I had trouble even formulating the words in my mouth because it happens so rarely, but that's not the rule I want to talk about. They have decided to keep the runner on second in extra innings. Are you okay with it? No, no? I hate it. You know, I hate this rule. Oh, see, I don't mind it. Why? It, I, I understand. Like they're saying it's short ramp up. We want to keep uh, the pitchers healthy, mm-hmm. but first of all, how many, how many of these marathon games get played a year? Uh, they expanded the rosters in April. There's no limit on how many pitchers you can have. So, like, we don't yeah. need this rule. I don't like it. I've suggested what I like already many times on our platform. Give me two innings of regular baseball mm-hmm. after the ninth inning. So, 10, 11 regular baseball. And then 12, maybe if you want to go to that, sure, I prefer a different route. Um, but I still think we should play those two clean innings of baseball before we go with this runner on second rule. I could be convinced of that. I, I, I don't mind your theory. Maybe I would only do the 10th as regular baseball and then do this. I know a lot of people are just saying it's a gimmick. It's stupid. They're ruining baseball. I actually like seeing the strategy that is used. To me, there's, a, there's an increased tempo in it. I look at it as I used to call poker for a living. So I look at it as an ante, you know, uh, like it forces sure. action. So to me, it's not bad. Um, the only thing I hate about it is that people call it a ghost runner. That is a real human being out there. It's not like I can see him. So, but he, so it's not you know like, what? He's it's sort of a ghost because he doesn't count in any stats. 
doesn't well, count as an earned run. Anything but he's like still that. So it's like, yeah, he's still human. But he's like a half ghost, has hu- half has human, half human. Is that a thing? By the way, I talked to um, Justin Turner. I think he told me one time that he started out consecutive extra innings as the uh, as the runner on second. He said he felt such shame because you're the last guy to make the, the, the last out of the out. previous inning. How come no one care? Everyone cares about the pitcher's arms. What about the runner that has to go out there? All of a sudden, you're creating another opportunity for him to pull a hammy late in the game. Nobody cares about hitters, man. That's incredible. Oh, God Almighty! I, I got to move on to the last one. That was so ridiculous. Um, Bobby Witt Jr. Speaking of ridiculous, hit a rocket ship yesterday. Royals put it out on social media. Who retweeted it and then put the bombs emojis? None other than you may know him as Royals owner but he dabbles in another profession, Patrick mm. Mahomes mm. as well, which is pretty cool. Like Witt pretty Jr. Cool. was like, that's awesome. That's really cool. What celebrity took a liking to something you did and you were like, that's amazing. Well, every time I talk to you, you tell me how good I am. So that's nice. Yeah, I have two. Don't count, bro. I have two real quick. One time I uh, sat near Rich Eisen on a plane. We started talking. He told me he had me had me on some fantasy teams that he won and he was okay, that's excited about my rich is a B I'm a D rich is a B. Wow. Rich. I think rich is like pretty high up there. I'll give you an A lister. You want an A lister? Mm-hmm. Elton John Whoa. shouted me Dozier uh, Mauer. And I think Phil Hughes, we went to a concert of his met him beforehand, big baseball fan. He's a Braves fan. I'm sure he was really happy last year. Uh, he gave us a shout. He dedicated the song to us, gave us a shout out on stage. That's an A-lister right there. That's a, a night. Holy shit. That is so that's an my A-lister. guy, Elton. Yeah, hey. that was really cool. And, 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 have- and guys, he's on tour. He's going on tour. Last tour ever. Go see him. By the way, don't buy that last tour stuff. I went to his last tour like three <laughs> years ago in L.A. <laughs> it wasn't the last tour. I saw him. It, I saw him then, too. It was at at, uh, at the, the Crypt. Now, I guess they're calling it at Staples. Is that mm-hmm. when you went? No, I, I saw him at a small, I think it was the Wiltern I saw him at. Oh, it was like, it was preparing to go out onto tour. Oh, I will say this. And I've always loved Elton John's music. I just think he's a great entertainer. He can rock. He's still in his seventies. He was still going. He was still standing as we like to say. Yes. What about you? Um, what you got, man? Best damn early on. I go into the makeup room before the show. Magic Johnson walks in. Wow. Now. Even though I grew up in Cleveland, huge Cavs fan, you were either like Lakers or Celtics because the Cavs weren't great when I was growing up at all. So it felt like the Lakers and Celtics, that's all they talked about. And they always met in the finals, bird magic. So you were either a Celtics guy or a Lakers guy. And so I was a Lakers guy. And here comes Magic for the first time on our show. I hadn't met him yet. And I'm like, Magic, Chris Rose, I just want him. He has the beaming smile. Chris, stop it. He goes, you're like me. You are the point guard. You just roll the ball out, and we are going to have a great time. And I was like, Magic (laughs) knew I was. That's awesome. I I called my dad right afterward. I was like, Dad, Dad, Magic Johnson knows who I am. That's a bigger than life figure right there. Oh, yeah. And I've got a great one, too. You'll laugh at this. I had just made the move from CNN to Fox. And my first job with Fox, this is in November of 99, Staples Center had just opened. So it was my job to go into the interview, uh, into the locker room and interview the Lakers one by one after their first game ever at Staples. So I interviewed Phil, I interviewed Kobe, interviewed all these guys. And then Shaq comes over and I stick my hand out. I say, hey, Shaq, my name's Chris Rose. He goes, I know who you are, little man. I have direct TV. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that's good. That sounds exactly like Shaq. And I'm sure like that is something he would say for sure. Like you oh, are, uh, you are a little man to that guy. Oh God. <laughs> the largest human ever. Um, what do you have on John boy? I'm going uh, right after this. We got talking baseball coming out. So that'll be live. Um, we'll do that. Um, and then you and I are going five days a week. Go yep. check out the blitz ball game from last night or two nights ago. It's an amazing game. I'm still not going to spoil it if you haven't seen it yet, but it's you're going to be shocked. Mm-hmm. Promise that. Uh, so go check that out. What about you? 
Uh, Rose rotation still with Lucas and Casey Giolito. That Casey, of course, is Lucas's younger brother. Uh, a lot of good, fun stuff, stories about them growing up, um, all sorts of good stuff. And then last night I taped an episode with Amir Garrett, uh, who John Boy Media just got traded from the Reds to the Royals, since that's all we did out at our compound was trade players. He took us through that, the emotions, because he was a lifelong Red, just like Jesse Winker. He was very honest about the Reds' decisions to kind of tear down the team and how the players felt a little slighted. Uh, amazing discussion about him being in the same division, again, as Javier Baez. And he took us through kind of what has transpired and what might happen in their first at bat when they face each other. Like, it was, I was fascinated. He was great on so much stuff. Uh, you know, Did you, like, the- talk about, like, the charging of the dugout and all that stuff? Did you get oh, into yeah. that? Yeah, I asked I asked him point blank. I said, listen, the Royals fans might not have known who you were. And then they'll go, oh, yeah, that was the guy who took on the entire Pirates team. I said, does it bother you that that might be the thing you're known as nationally? So he took us through the whole thing. Really a lot of fascinating. He's still close with Russell Westbrook from his, um, his hoops days. Is he from L.A.? Um, you know, because Russell is Vegas during his high later high school years. And, but he played against a lot of these guys growing up. Interesting. Yeah. And so he just, he's had a really interesting path and uh, I'm excited to check it out. There's a lot of good stuff that we cover. So he's an interesting dude. So there you go. Um, special shout out to our producer extraordinaire, the one and only coffee filled yo bro, Dan Rourke. That is T. Plouffe. I am Chris Rose. We will see you Thursday on Baseball Today.